The IRS scandal could turn out to be the greatest scandal in U.S. political history. Not only will it show the criminal behavior of people in the radical segments who work within our federal government, who've conspired under the direction of the White House to perform acts that can only be compared to Gestapo-type intimidation against conservative groups, but we will also show their extreme favorable bias, resulting in aiding and abetting the financing of terrorism. These are not just ordinary generic Islamic terrorists, but terrorists who are close family members of President Obama himself. In this short documentary, we will expose with concrete evidence the role of the IRS in granting illegal 501c3 status to terror front groups, and the summary details with solid evidence of the terror front organizations that are run by President Obama's family, which include raising and funneling money to Hamas. U.S. Representative Mike Kelly sits on the House Ways and Means Committee. After reviewing just some of this research, he is referred to it as spot on. Listen to Congressman Mike Kelly answer a constituent's request for justice on this matter. The, the entity that Malik Obama works for is a state sponsor of terrorism. We're talking about Omar al-Bashir, Muslim Brotherhood. Yes. This is a much bigger scandal than right. anything else involving right. the IRS. Yeah, and, and that's, uh, just to follow up on yours, listen, you're spot on. and here, here's Whoa, spot on, indeed. When it comes to Barack Obama's half-brother Malik Obama, the money trail leads directly to terrorism. Yet Malik Obama's 501c3 application sailed right on through, thanks to Lois Lerner, the director of the IRS Exempt Organizations Divisions, who in a mere 28 days granted tax-exempt status to Malik Obama's organization when it normally takes 10 months. And when granted, get this, it was backdated 38 months when the maximum allowed by law is 27 months. Compare that to conservative Tea Party groups who have been waiting for years for their tax-exempt status to be granted, and some are still waiting. Malik Obama is executive director of the International Dawa Organization, otherwise known as the IDO, and the IDO is an arm of the Sudanese government, which is led by Omar al-Bashir, who is wanted by the International Criminal Court, or ICC, for crimes against humanity. But wait, it gets worse. Al-Bashir is a member of the Muslim Brotherhood. And the IDO is a partner with the Union for God, otherwise known as UG, which is an umbrella group for Hamas. UG was designated by the U.S. Treasury Department as a terrorist organization, and Hamas has been designated as a foreign terrorist organization, or NFTO, by the U.S. State Department. UG, the Union for Good, represents over 50 Islamic fundraising groups, including the IDO and the World Association of Muslim Youth, or WAMY, WAMI, which is also linked to Hamas. UG, WAMI, can it get any worse? Unfortunately, yes. Malik Obama proudly displays and flaunts the partnership between his Barack Hussein Obama Foundation, the BHOF, and the IDO in photos of promotional boards on his website. The IDO also has a bank account with the Al Shamal Bank, based in Sudan. The Financial Times reported that Osama bin Laden invested $50 million in the Al Shamal Bank one year after it became operational, according to the U.S. State Department. On the homepage of the UG website, Malik Obama's IDO boss, Suwar al Dahab, is identified as the vice president of the group right behind Muslim Brotherhood's spiritual leader, Yusuf al Qaradawi, who is listed as president of the Union of Good, which lists the IDO as a partner organization. In 2010, Malik Obama was in Yemen for an Orphans Development Conference. While there, he had his photo taken of himself wearing a Hamas scarf. On one side of his scarf was a map of Israel that read Palestine in Arabic. On the other side of the scarf, it read Jerusalem, onward we march forth, and Palestine, from the river to the sea. A clear endorsement of Hamas's goal to eliminate Israel. Others who attended the conference included the commander of the Gaza Flotilla in 2010, the general supervisor of WAMI, Omar al-Bashir's brother, and leaders from the Muslim World League and the Islamic Relief Organization. 
All of these groups either have ties to terrorism or are themselves designated terrorist groups. As law-abiding Tea Party groups continue to fight off their own federal government from intimidation, while they suffer from exercising their First Amendment rights, Malik Obama's foundation long ago received pain-free and illegal tax-exempt status from the IRS. That tax-exempt status enables more funds to go to terrorists who already pose a grave threat to U.S. national security. The question the American people will want to know is who in the IRS or the Treasury or the White House gave the order to allow the Barack H. Foundation, a now proven terror front organization, the status it did not deserve? And who is guilty of being an accessory to terror funding? Malik Obama is connected to terrorism, and if he is providing material support to terrorists, he may be an enemy combatant. Perhaps it's time to grant Lois Lerner immunity and dangle in front of her the charge of aiding and abetting an enemy combatant during the commission of another crime. Don't the American people deserve to know the truth? This is not a conspiracy theory or matter of opinion. The facts and evidence overwhelmingly prove that Barack Obama's family should be indicted on terror charges and that President Obama could be involved if the 501c3 status was directed for approval from the White House, which we believe is highly likely, if the right questions can be asked to the right people in the IRS, such as Renee Norton and Lois Lerner, who were involved in approving the Barack H. Obama Foundation tax-exempt status. Visit Shubat.com For a list of all of our work on Malik Obama, visit Shubat.com slash Malik dash Obama dash articles.